Hey guys, it's Girl Got Game. Welcome back to Magical Diary, where this time around we're doing Barbara Salmoro's Root, our resident snake girl. I'm very excited to find out more about her because she's a very aloof person. And speaking of aloof, I was going to start this video a little later when we first meet Barbara, but we've never done this option before, so I thought we would look aloof and just see what that gets us. I don't know if it will get us anything, but let's find out. I lean back against the wall and let William handle this. Okay, is everything the same now? I'm just, I'm like, eh. We're gonna be a little more antisocial this route. Um, I think we'll just say sorry. And we're gonna focus mon uh, monely? I was gonna, I combine mostly and mainly. Okay, we're off to a good start. I'm gonna focus mainly on red magic, because that seems to be what Barbara likes. Um, but of course, for the first week, we need to do one of each. Get acquainted. So we have a spell for every occasion. Alright, there's Barbara. I didn't realize she was so close. Okay. So we meet her basically the first day. After class, I go for a walk to stretch my legs. Iris Academy does have a nice campus. The colors of the flowers shimmer gently in the sunlight. I see an older girl in horse hall robes crouching down next to one of the little hedge sections. She looks like she's talking to the plants. I don't know, maybe she is talking to them. It sounds like something Professor Potsdam might encourage. Paths lead away from the main quad into more secluded areas. There are some nice benches here in the shade of the trees. A nice place to sit and think while getting some fresh air. Beyond the trees, I can see some open grassy areas. People could play football out there, or at least throw a frisbee. As I'm walking along, something falls past my face. Not close enough to hit me, but what was that? I look down. There's a single shoe lying on the ground. Did someone throw it at me? I look up. Over my head, a pair of black stocking-clad legs are wrapped around a tree branch. Only one foot still has its shoe. And above those legs... Is Barbara sitting in a tree. She gets a CG so early. Is a girl in snake hall robes. Let's see her without her shoe. That's a really cute shoe. Hello there. Did she not hear me? Try waving. I wave up at her. Mm. She nods at me. Just look, I mean, I gotta remember to be Franco Franco. I gotta get back my Franco Franco mindset. Blah, blah. All right, we're gonna do this. This is gonna be more confusing because I'm giving Barbara my normal voice. <laughs> I had to keep remembering. She nods at me just a little. Or else it was the branch swaying. Hard to tell. Is everything okay up there? Uh. We're not really establishing any communication. I bend down and pick up her dropped shoe. Do you want your shoe back? You have to give me a sign or I'll leave it here and go. Do you want me to give you your shoe? Uh. She stares at me for a moment. Biting her lip, she nods vigorously, twice, and holds out her hand. I can also climb a tree. I'll be right up. <laughs> I wrap my legs around the trunk and begin to climb. I've been doing this since I was a kid. It's easy. I'm a pretty good judge of trees. And because of that, I don't think climbing out onto the same branch she's sitting on is a great idea. Instead, I get up to her level and hold out my hand with the shoe in it. After a moment, she scoots closer and snags the shoe from my grip. She still doesn't say anything or make any move to put her shoe on, so I shrug and climb back down. No point in harassing her if she wants to be left alone. Thanks. She speaks so quietly I almost didn't hear it, so she can talk after all. So, I'll see you around sometime. She looks at me, then shrugs with just one shoulder, the key on her air swaying. Okay, then. 
Snake hull grills are weird. It's probably where I would end up. <laughs> and if not, I'd want to end up there just so I could wear purple. Okay, so now we're gonna skip through. Um, let's be more general this time. Have I done? I don't know. Okay. Just for fun. I've never met any before, but I don't know. I don't know a lot about twins or wild seeds. I shrug. Maybe my parents didn't tell me everything. Sweet Luke, I do miss you. You were so cute. You're currently number one, my boy. Um, I'm not taking sides. I haven't done this before. I'm staying out of this. Oh! Uh, she's annoying. Speaking of annoying, there's many. Um, she's very outgoing. Really, really outgoing. Okay, so because we're on Barbara's route, Barbara's in love with the dungeons. So we're going to be spending a lot of time in the dungeons and avoiding many like the plague. So. I want to get a look at the dungeons. All right, I'll show you to the entrance. We head out onto the grounds together. What's it like down there anyway? A labyrinth. Active dungeon levels get rearranged a lot between exams. Areas get connected and then split apart again. Some tunnels might stay sealed up for years. You never know. He points to what looks like a pair of wooden doors set at an angle. A cellar entrance. That's the main way in. The freshman section is automatically open. Don't try to open any other doors off the main corridor. They should be sealed, but just in case. Don't. With a single week's worth of pentachromatic education, it can't be a good idea to go poking around in areas meant for upperclassmen. Now I really do have to go. I may not see you tomorrow, so if not, be prepared for me to wake you up early on Monday morning. What happens on Monday? You'll find out. Well, I guess I'd better get exploring. The underground space is quiet and cool. I don't see any other students or any directions, but there's just the one door open, so that must be the way. As I'm thinking that, the snake hall girl I saw up a tree the other day emerges from the dungeon staircase. She walks past me without speaking. I'm not sure what to make of that. Well, I won't learn anything standing here. Time to go on. Okay. That's our only interaction with uh, Barbara. And I've been in here. It's like you walk around and you look at the dummy. So we're just gonna leave immediately. We'll do some more exploring in the following weeks. Because there's gonna be a lot of time to explore the dungeons. <laughs> Barbara's kind of all about power, so let's say that. Sure. If you want to achieve something, you have to work for it. If it was easy, everyone would do it and it wouldn't stand out. The question is, what are you achieving? What good is this sort of fame going to do you? Invites to all the best parties? Donald shrugs. <laughs> now you're thinking long term. Um... I don't want to be mean to Ellen. I'm just going to be like Ellen. <laughs> I, I can't do it again. Uh, let's see. Football, basketball, volleyball. Let's do volleyball. Why not? Uh, oh, about studying. I didn't go to the mall or study. I just shrug. It doesn't matter to me. You ought to pay more attention to your schoolwork. Oh, boring, boring, boring. I want to eat all your food. <laughs> all right, let's look at our diary. Moving in, meeting people, late for orientation. A strange girl. That's a good way to start. I met a girl from Snake Hall who was climbing trees. Apparently, she doesn't talk much, but she thanked me for giving her back the shoe that she dropped. All right. I thought that was impossible. 
hot-headed, goodwill ambassadors, infamy, lunch and cat. Okay, so we didn't talk about running into Barbara in the dungeon, but that's fine. I also shouldn't be poor this time, because I'm not going to be doing any, um... Uh, I'm not going to be doing... What was I talking about? Oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm not going to be running for president, is what I was trying to say. Ugh, my brain just, like, went... Uh, I'm going to say I don't want special treatment. You know? Okay, is there... There's Barbara. There's a little bit with Barbara here. This part I understand. Most of us are strangers, even if we've had a few classes together. I've read through the list of class names, but I haven't had a chance to match them all to faces. The quiet girl from Snake Hall turns out to be Barbara Salmoro. And that's Jacob Blazing, who Grabiner said was a prominent student because of his family. Good old Jacob. Alright, so we're gonna... Let's see. Here we go. Guess we'll go back one last thing. No threats are issued, only commands, but the younger students obey without question, spinning this way and that, cringing and kneeling before their supposed masters. Most of them, anyway. What are you looking at, freshman? I quickly flip through my handbook. The butterfly senior's name is Angela Kirsch. Answer me when I speak to you, worm! That's what you are, isn't it? A fresh worm. Now get down on the ground and wriggle. Mm. She's not backing down. Is that senior going to hit her? I start to step towards the pair, but before I can leave William's side... Huh. I think I'd like you. Huh? I think you should be mine. <laughs> Is this freshman choosing business normally such a battle? Alright, and then there's the other two. Okay, so now we are on our own. So let's go full on red and get some nice forceful spells in our repertoire. Oh, Blaze, always a pleasure to see you. But we're gonna skip through that this time. What was that? Okay, I'm sporty right now. I was just curious. Um, we can be a little aggressive with her, but I don't want to be too aggressive because I don't want her to pursue me just yet. We're not on that boat. We're just gonna... We're just gonna do that, and then we're gonna kneel down to get it. We're just not going to worry about that. Um, <laughs> groan. <laughs> That's a good one. Oh, what spell did we learn? Actually, I want to go through the red magic stuff. We've learned some of these before, but that way I know what I actually have in my book. We have already discussed the use of force to move air and cause a breeze. The next step is directing force to push a solid object. Pushing is a blunt and diffuse force. You might apply pressure to a door, but a push spell cannot turn a handle to open it. You might use this spell to knock an item off a shelf that is too high for you to reach with your hands. And if you are standing under that shelf, you might knock the object directly onto your own head. Always consider the consequences of force. If you push a box ahead of you into a river, what would you expect to happen? The box would get wet. And then be swept away by the current. You might also push a dangerous creature away from you if it cannot brace itself. But after that push, how will it react? Consider that before you attempt to push around something larger and more powerful than yourself. Okay. I will consider. Uh, a whole list of instructions. I've never actually just made up answers before. I don't need William to be my friend. 
Let's see what happens. Let's see how upset he'll get with us. I fill in a bunch of random guesses. Who knows, maybe some of them will even turn out to be correct. At least if I stay in my room, no other seniors can boss me around. I'm gonna regret that in a little bit. Oh well. For science, we have to know. There's William. Is he gonna... Uh, have you completed your task? Uh-oh. I hand over the sheet of paper with my answers. He stares at it, saying nothing. Um... Look, I'm sorry. I was feeling overwhelmed with all this initiation stuff. Well, it's alright. It's not like I'm a professor. I can't give you demerits for poor performance. Does that happen? In an exam, if they think you really aren't trying, yes. Keep that in mind. Okay. I immediately, uh, wussed out. <laughs> of being, uh, of having William be angry at me. I'm like, I can't do it. Later. Later I'll do it. Someone knocks on my door. Is this going to be another senior? No, it's actually the girl we've all been waiting for. There's only one way to find out. Outside, I find Barbara, the quiet girl from Snake Hall. Ah, uh, hi. Were you looking for me? She hands me a folded piece of paper. I open it up. The cursive handwriting takes me a moment to turn into words, but then I read, I need William Danson's socks. What? She stares at me. William's socks. Uh, is this for an initiation task? She nods, a quick jerk of emotion. So why are you asking me? I know she can talk. For some reason, she just doesn't want to. I guess... Because I'm William's freshman, you thought I could help. She looks at me, expectant and silent. William sucks? I wouldn't know how to break into his room and steal them even if I wanted to. I'd have to go and ask him for them. Um, okay, so I'm gonna save. Let's see, where were we? That's Ellen. Ellen, Ellen. Was I on six? Was I on eight? Where was I? Fourteen? Hmm, maybe I am back around to one. Alright, writing over William stuff. Um, socks. I don't know that William will ever give us his socks because Angela's involved, but can I offer my own socks? Does that help? I'm gonna try. Well, I can't give you William's socks, but I can give you mine. Uh. Socks are socks, right? I mean, maybe not for you girls, if you have cute little lacy ones or something. I look down at her feet. <laughs> Under her leggings, it almost looks like she wears no socks at all. But in the shadows of her shoes, I can just glimpse whisper-thin black ankle socks. Yeah, those are definitely not my socks. I'll bet William wears chunky white socks like me, so it should be fine. She's thinking about it. I think. I'll even give you extra smelly you socks to prove they're a guy's. <laughs> Barbara snickers quietly, then nods and holds out her hand. I duck back into my room, stick my head under my bed, and fish out a couple of socks that haven't found the laundry pile yet. Ah, uh, magic laundry. I feel like this is good because Barbara's a rebel anyway, so she's not fulfilling her task to the letter, but she is. She doesn't flinch at all when I hand them to her. Well, they're not really that bad as socks go. They haven't had long to ferment. She bobs her head to me and then walks away without saying anything more. I guess she's happy at least. Yay! Happy Barbara! <laughs> Hopefully she doesn't get into trouble because then I'll be in hot water. 
When Professor Grapner arrives for class, we're all waiting quietly in our seats. Oh no, it's the love letter. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna skip that. I thought he was gonna teach us something, but no. Hey, Franco! A feeling of dread sweeps over me. Oh! Have we done this? No. But when I turn, it's only another freshman. Yes. William asked me to show you the way to the library. I don't know why. He seemed to think you needed to know. Yo, Urchin! What's up, sis? Like I just said, William asked me to show Franco to the school library. Why did he ask you and not me? We all live in the same hall. I don't know, maybe he didn't think you'd do it. But... Come on, I need to do this and get back to my roommate. She's really upset. Oh yeah, that. It probably wasn't a good idea for her to send a love letter to Professor Grabner. She didn't. She wrote it to her senior. Then he gave it to Grabby to get Ellen in trouble. Really? Well, who else would have done it? It doesn't sound like he's taking his role as her senior very seriously. Or maybe I just don't understand how this whole thing works. Look, why don't you go on back? I can show Franco the library. I told William I- He's my hallmate. You should take care of yours. Ugh. Fine. Wow. Donald was like, I am his hallmate and friend. You can get lost. Look, you don't have to go to any trouble. It's not trouble! Seriously. It'll take two minutes tops. I just don't know why my brother didn't ask me. Yeah, I'm like, was he trying to get me and Virginia together? Or that doesn't seem right. Poor Donald. So that's the problem. He's busy with initiation stuff, right? He's my senior, and I haven't seen him myself today. He probably ran into Virginia by accident or something and asked her because she was there. That's all. Yeah. Probably. He shrugs. Anyway, come on. I guess I'm getting this because I didn't do the initiation task, so I don't actually know where the library is. That's kind of neat. They still show you. He heads off down the hallway, and there's nothing for me to do but follow him. The Iris Academy Library turns out to be fairly small and tucked away in the back of a building. The bulk of the collection appears to be general encyclopedias and foreign language dictionaries. There are two cases with books on magic and history, but this clearly isn't the place for high-level research. The professors probably keep private collections. A black woman stands behind the desk, her hand resting comfortably on a wooden staff. She must be the school librarian. Her robe is made out of dozens of different colors and fabrics all patchworked together, with extra beads and pockets added seemingly at random. Hey, Miss Darden! She nods at him very slightly. Miss, not Professor. Oh no, honey, I'm not one of them. She speaks slowly with a warm, round accent that's not familiar to my ears. She's from down south. And Franco's from Europe. Hmm. She doesn't say anything else, but returns to her own contemplations. Donald waves an arm, drawing my attention around the library. Not very exciting, huh? Check out all those magazines. Nothing magical there. The covers are shouting about fashion and celebrity gossip. This must be how Iris Academy keeps up with developments in the outside world. They should subscribe to something more interesting. Cars, sports, model trains, anything. So, were you looking for something here? No. I really don't know why William wanted me to come here. Guess he's just making sure you're prepared in case you need to study or something. Libraries are great, you know. You never know what, what you might find. I guess. At least now I know where it is. So yay? Aw, oh, man. Uh, that family. <laughs> the dancing family. Okay. 
So this is the initiation party. You know what? I am just gonna stay and talk with you guys. Forget the others. Alright, you guys are taking me to the mall. Um, I don't have money to do anything yet. I guess I'm just gonna window shop. Um, things are going great. I feel. Um... Have I done I'm just glad it's over? Yes, I have. Okay, let's go back. Um... Okay, great, and... How about that? Okay, we haven't done this before. William explained to me that the point was to trick people into feeling a sense of togetherness and belonging. If you use white magic to force us into bonding with each other, that would be wrong, wouldn't it? Why is a trick any better? Do you feel the sense of increased togetherness with your classmates? Yes. If you are aware of it, but it still functions, is it actually a trick? All magical youth in America are required to attend and graduate from an accredited institution or forfeit their power. These schools do not exist solely to pass on knowledge of spells, but to enforce the structure of society. We take our responsibilities seriously. Inform your parents of that when next you contact them. Alright, and we got back around to the parents after all that. Interesting. I'll, I'll be interested to do no one of these times, though. Uh, let's see. That. Okay, done that already. Senior Inquisition. Insubordination. Okay, I haven't read this. I decided not to bother with William's in initiation quiz and just made up answers. He's required to support me no matter what, so there's no point in doing the busy work. Ouch. I felt bad about not treating William's quiz request seriously, so I apologize. He didn't seem very upset, but warned that in the future, professors might give demerits for lack of effort. Thinking outside the socks. That's the name of the episode. Barbara Salmoro came by asking for my help to get a pair of William's socks. I didn't want to bother William, so I offered her my own socks instead, and that seemed to amuse her. I guess I helped. Um, okay, we did that. Library located. Because I didn't do his initiation quiz, William sent Virginia to show me the way to the library, but Donald intervened and showed me himself. Virginia went back to console her roommate, who's in trouble over a love letter she wrote for her senior. Okay, did that, and... Uh, okay. I think we're all caught up. Done. Done did it. Now what? Is this Luke? Oh, it's you guys. Oh. <laughs> uh, my socks. By the way, I believe these are yours. He hands me back a pair of my socks and I toss them over my shoulder into my room. I'm not even going to ask. <laughs> <laughs> what, Angela just showed up with your socks, and you're like, I think these are Franco's. Well, I'm glad I didn't steal your socks, William. <laughs> I can't believe I got my socks back. <laughs> I really wasn't expecting to get them back at all. Forceful magic need not always be applied externally or with an outward direction. The energy can be focused upon itself. Observe. He passes by each student in turn. When he reaches me, I feel my desk begin to vibrate in place, buzzing with trapped energy. After a moment, it stops, showing no sign of damage. The only lingering effect is a faint warmth. With sufficient magical energy, one could cause an object to literally destroy itself, shaking and crumbling into nothing. Thankfully for the school buildings, none of you can muster up such a power. At your level, the best use for internalized energy is to counteract effects that might have otherwise reduced it. If a spell has caused you to be slowed, frozen, or asleep, an excitation spell would return you to normal. 
Though you might face some difficulty in casting such a spell in those circumstances. It might be useful in a team adventure, though. Energize. Shakes and warms the target, counteracting some spell effects. I wonder if there's a point to using it in the final exam. I don't know. Hey, Donald. Can I sing? No, I'm terrible. Okay, this is the gym. I'm pretty sure that Barbara's not in any clubs. Not even sports clubs. She's just in love with the dungeons, so we're just gonna leave that alone. Nothing really catches my fancy. At least not enough to be worth the time and effort. I think I'll just go back to my room. We're gonna be laid back without being laid back, you know? Fire. The control of fire, and the failure to control fire, is the blessing and the downfall of civilization. The element of fire is swift and unpredictable. It can and will turn on you in an instant. Never relax your guard. Today we will be summoning the smallest possible amount of fire. A single spark. He points his hand at a thick wooden block set up on top of a desk. A glimmer of red drifts from his fingertip to the wooden surface and disappears, leaving only a tiny black mark. A spark will sting your flesh, but the damage done is too small to serve as anything more than a warning. So it's not really an attack spell. It wouldn't do much against a monster. However, if that spark were to strike a different target... This time he points at a glass bowl containing some scraps of paper. The spark falls from his fingers, and the bowl is suddenly engulfed in a burst of yellow-orange flame. Before I can blink, the fire, and the paper in the bowl, have vanished, burnt up in a flash. Even this spark can create a fire which will grow far beyond its original constraints. Always consider your environment. While there are circumstances in which you might be able to use this spell offensively, it is primarily a tool. You need only one spark to light a candle or a campfire. Far more useful in your life than any combat. Spark. A spark strikes a target which may catch fire if it's something likely to burn. But aren't monsters things that are likely to burn? I have questions. I want to know. Probably won't learn that here, though. Um, okay, it's William. Minnie said she'd be holding study sessions in the library. So I can still join study group even though I never... Uh, okay. But I'm not. I'm gonna be diligent and go to the dungeons. I decided to get in a little more practice before my first exam. Didn't run into Barbara. Well... Hi, training dummy. At least you understand me. Light ahead. And... Something on the floor. <laughs> Horace was here. Glad to hear it. And that's about it, isn't it? Okay. So plants do not catch fire. Good to know. Okay. And I can push you. Good thing you don't get mad about me pushing you. I guess we're just gonna leave, right? Yep. Well, that was a bust. Oh well. I learned that plants don't catch fire, so that's something. Alright, dreaming of home. And let's see. Club signups. Um let's see what clubs are available, not musical, school clubs. I didn't join anything. Exam warning. Uh, and yeah, that was basically it. 
All right, a little bit of interaction with Barbara to start and some red magic. Off to a good start.